In this section, we're going to relate free energy, delta G, with the equilibrium constant. Um, so eventually, we'll get there. So delta G, under non-standard conditions, can be uh, solved for using this equation. And non-standard conditions, remember, standard conditions mean um, that if you have a solid or a liquid, it's pure. If you have a concentration, it has a one, one molar concentration if you have an aqueous solution. If you have a pressure, the pressure, if you have a gas, the pressure is one atmosphere. And so you'll end up, um, you know, if you are under non-standard conditions, then Q will not be one. So you'll have to calculate a Q. So delta G is delta G naught. Delta G naught is the one that you find um, using a table of values or um, any of the ways that we looked at earlier in the chapter. R is the gas constant right here. T is temperature, make sure that temperature is in Kelvin. And then Q, remember Q is like your products over reactants raise your stoichiometric coefficients. There you go, Q, products over reactants raised to stoichiometric coefficients. If you're under standard conditions, then Q is just going to equal 1, right? Because everything, all your pressures are 1 or all your concentrations are 1. So 1 divided by 1 raised to whatever is just going to give you 1. Natural log of 1 is just 0. Um, and so this whole term will just cancel out. And delta G is just equal to delta G naught. At equilibrium, delta G is equal to 0. So let's try to use that equation in a sample exercise here. So in this problem, they want to calculate delta G. Notice the difference between delta G and delta G naught. This little superscript naught means you're under standard conditions. This means you're under non-standard conditions. So non-standard conditions, we have all these pressures here, and um, they're not. We have all these gases, and they're not at a one atmospheric pressure. They're they're they are different pressures. So in order to find delta G, we need to use the equation that we had above. Delta G is equal to delta G naught, which they give you, plus R times T times the ln of Q. So we always know R. Um, they give us temperature here. They give us delta G. So we have delta G naught. We have R. We have T. We need to find the natural log of Q. So that's the first thing we want to do. Set up our Q expression. So Q is equal to the products over the reactants. So it's going to be the pressure of NH3 squared. Since we have pressures, you could also, if, if we had if they gave us concentrations, you can use those as well. Um, the pressure of N2 times the pressure of H2 cubed. And so we can plug in these values. So up here they tell you NH3 is, what, 2? So I have 2.0 squared over 0.5 times 0.75 cubed, and your Q value ends up being 18.96, and now you just want to plug in everything else. So delta G is equal to delta G naught, negative 33.3 kilojoules per mole, plus R, I'm going to use the 8.314, I'm going to go ahead and put that in kilojoules, and so I just divide the R that was given on the other page, divide that by 1,000 to get it into kilojoules per mole Kelvin. R times T times the natural log of 18.96. So delta G naught plus R T ln of Q. So again, we found Q before there. The R, all I did was say R was 8.314. That's in joules per mole Kelvin. So I said there's a thousand joules and one kilojoule to get that over to uh, 8.314 times 10 to the negative three. You guys should know how to do that by now. So when you work out this delta G, you get negative 26.0 kilojoules per mole. So that's a pretty straightforward problem, um, trying to calculate delta G under non-standard conditions. Now we can relate delta G naught and equilibrium constant using this equation as well. So under standard conditions, Q is equal to 1, so the natural log of, of Q is 0, and this whole term just drops out. And so under standard conditions, delta G is delta G naught. At equilibrium, Q is equal to K, right? So if we were at equilibrium, this Q is equal to K, and that's what we mean by equilibrium. And this delta G is zero. So if you have zero equals delta G naught plus RT ln of K, and you just want to solve for delta G, you can subtract out this RT ln of K on both sides, RT ln of K. And you end up with this equation, right? Delta G naught equals negative RT 
ln of k. So you can relate delta g naught under standard conditions with the equilibrium constant. And if you just want to solve for the equilibrium constant, then you can rearrange the equation to solve for um, k, divide by negative rt, divide by negative rt, and so you get natural log of k is negative delta g naught over r times t. To undo that natural log, take the e of both sides, and yet k is e to the negative delta g naught over r times t. So let's try to use this equation in the next, next example. If they give us delta g naught and t, can we solve for k? And so that's what they give us in this problem. t, just make sure that your temperature is in um, Kelvin. So just add 273 to that to get 298 Kelvin for your temperature. Um, R, again, 8.314 joules per mole kelvin or if you want to put that in kilojoules and you can do this in kilojoules or in joules it really doesn't matter you should get the same answer just as long as you're consistent if you're going to use your delta g naught in kilojoules then r has to be in kilojoules if you're going to use your delta g naught in joules then r has to be in joules just as long as those units match you'll be fine um, we'll do it in joules this time just to show you that it, it'll still work okay so we have k equals e to the negative delta g naught over r times t. And we're just going to plug in. So k is e to the negative delta g. We'll use this one, that's fine. Notice how I have a negative here, and my delta g is also negative, so I have a negative times a negative, which is going to give me a positive. If you drop a negative somewhere, it's going to screw you up completely. Divided by r times t, so 8.314 times 298 and so you can find that number and then do e to that number so you might want to do this in baby steps so I got k equals e to the 13.45 so I did negative times negative 33 33,300 divided by r times t use a whole bunch of parentheses or do this in baby steps it's up to you so I have k equals e to the 13.45 which gives me um, like 6.87 times 10 to the 5 and let's just round to like one sig fig we get like 7 times 10 to the 5. This isn't the best way to solve for k. It's possible. What it's going to do is really give you like an approximation for how big k is. This is a uh, you know, 7 times 10 to the 5. It's getting you like an order of magnitude. Depending on how many sig figs you use and how many you're carrying through throughout the calculation, you may end up with a very different looking number here. But when you round to one sig fig, we're all, we'll all be about in the same range. So if you have a really big K, something a lot bigger than 1, delta G is negative, the reaction is going to be spontaneous. When you have a K that's really small, delta G naught will be positive and the reaction will be non-spontaneous. So just by looking at how big your K is, or you could tell about delta G naught, or other way, other way around, if you know what delta G naught is, you can, you can kind of approximate what your K is going to be. Is it going to be big or small? So there are a few other equations we can, we can look at that are uh, related to this chapter. Um, if you wanted to look at how the equilibrium constant changes at different temperatures, um, assume that delta H and delta S are not going to change very much. This is a linear equation, so you can plot the natural log of K, whoops, ln of K versus 1 over temperature, and you'll get a straight line, um, and your slope will be equal to H, delta H over R. Um, you can also use the Van Hoff equation. So this is looking at two equilibrium constants at different temperatures. Instead of plotting, instead of making the graph, if you only have two temperatures you want to deal with, um, you can find delta H that way. Or if you had any of these, any four out of five of these variables, so K1, K2, T1, T2, and delta H, you always know RR is a constant. So if you have any four of those, you, you can find the other one. Um, and then also if you had a, um, this is a very specific application, the clausius clapeyron equations. This was the Van Hoff equation, this one is the clausius clapeyron If you take biochem, sometimes you'll see this equation come up again. And it's when you're looking at a, a phase change, so going from like a liquid to a gas, uh, the delta H now that you're looking at is very specific, it's the delta H of vaporization. And since you have a liquid over here and a gas over here, the equilibrium constant, right, K is just equal to the products of reactants, so it's just equal to the pressure 
of the water, um, you don't have to put the liquid in. So the equilibrium, instead of K here, you can see we have pressures. So it's just a very specific application of um, the Van Hoff equation. So let's practice just using the Van Hoff equation in this problem here. So they just say, consider this reaction at 298 Kelvin. Uh, they give you a delta H. And they say, find the equilibrium constant at a different temperature. Um, if at 643, this is what the equilibrium constant is. OK, so we have a lot of information here. They give us delta H. Say delta H is negative 41.2. And that's in kilojoules. They say at one temperature, the T1 will say this is 643. Then the K that goes with that one is uh, 16. And then the T2 is 725. And we're trying to find K2. OK, so let's write out this equation. Um, natural log of K2 over K1. And you don't have to memorize this one. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to, if I wanted you to do this on the test, I will give you the equations. This is a little more involved than our usual equations. You can derive this pretty easily, but I won't expect you to do that either. All right, so now we can plug in. Uh, we have natural log of K2, that's what we're looking for, over K1. Delta H is negative 41.2, and that's in kilojoules divided by 8.314. I'm going to put that in kilojoules as well. Uh, 1 over T1, which is 643, minus 1 over 725. OK, so take some time to work all that out and simplify. It might take you a couple times um, to get the same answer. So one of, do this step first, and then multiply by this. Do it in baby steps, and you'll be fine. So I got negative 0.8717. I'm going to take the e to both sides. So I end up with k2 over 16 is 0.4182. And then I'll multiply both sides by 16 to solve for k2, which ends up being about 6.7. And there's no units on your equilibrium constant. So there are a few other homework problems that look kind of like that, um, but again, you don't have to memorize that equation.